Okay, so I'm here with uh, Mike Moran. Well, anyone who's watching this, I'm sure will know uh, at least some things about you. What we're actually doing with this interview uh, is we're speaking to uh, a number of people who have had a very significant impact in music. Uh, so we're, it's basically seminal music makers, uh, and we're asking uh, these amazing music makers about their success and how they achieved it. So it's kind of a, a, an analysis of you know reflections on okay. what yeah. factors contributed to uh, the success. So, um, Mike, it, it's very you've done so many things uh, that have been you know really brilliant and of note, and uh, they would, it would be great to discuss them all. But in the half hour that we've got. Um, I thought it would be good uh, to focus on the work that you did with Freddie Mercury. Um, okay. So could you sort of talk about the relationship in terms of, of the arrangement and how it came about uh, briefly and uh, how you, uh, and the, I suppose, the relationship in the creative process, uh, because you were, um, I suppose, on the Barcelona project, um, there were uh, three prominent people, yourself being one, uh, Freddie Mercury, Montserrat Caballé, uh, and um, you were co-producer, co-writer. Can you, uh, can you tell us a, a, a bit about that, uh, please, Mike? Barcelona arose, uh, well, maybe a couple of years after I first met Fred, actually. But the re how I met Fred initially was that... Um, um, I was then the musical director of a, a rock musical that was done at the Dominion. Um, it was produced by Dave Clark. Called, the, the show was called Time. And uh, <clears throat> what we did with Time was we we made the the album first. And there were a lot of big names on the album. Stevie Wonder, Dionne Warwick, Leo Sayer, Ashford and Simpson. Um, you know, there, there was a load of stars. And there were two songs left to record on it. And, and Dave phoned me up one day and said, look, I'm going to try and see if I can get Freddie Mercury to sing these these two tracks. I went, wow, that's um, that's a leap into the stratosphere. And he said, look, you know, I, I kind of know Fred, but um, he's living in Munich at the time, so um, you know, I'll give him a call and see what he says. <clears throat> Excuse me. What happened was uh, Dave sent the you know demos of the songs to Freddie. Freddie said, yeah, they're great, and uh, I'll be happy to do it. And he said, um, I'm actually working on a solo project um, with the guys in Munich. Um, can we do it in Munich? And Dave said, well, look, um, we're doing all the things with Mike, who you've not met, um, at, at his place in, in, you know, in, in the UK. It would be great for consistency <clears throat> if you'd be prepared to come over and work with Mike. And he said, look, if you, could, if you could, guys don't get on for some reason or, you know, you, you know you, the end result is not what, what, what you're, you're, you're pleased with, then I will pay for the whole thing to be done again in Munich. So thanks, Dave. You know, that's, <laughs> but Fred came over, and um, you know, we we, um, we the first thing we did was the the, the title song from um, um, the musical Time, um, a, a brief a, a brief um, uh, sort of postscript that started uh, soon happened before it was that uh, the day before um, the session, which was at Abbey Road on a Monday, um, I had a, a car crash. But I got hit head on by a lorry driven by a drunk driver, and uh, I finished up in A and E at um, Hemel Hospital for you know until about one o'clock in the morning. What I didn't realize that I'd broken four ribs in the Gosh. top of here, and, and my my wrist. And look, the car saved my life, so that that's that's fine. But uh, I wasn't in too good a shape. But I phoned David and said, "Look, um, this has happened," and he said, "Well, look, I'll I'll cancel the session." I said, "You can't do that. Fred's flying over from Munich and." The whole thing set up and you know i'll be fine i actually did feel not that bad because of a pump full of class a you know drugs mm -hmm. so i think i felt felt not too bad <laughs> when i got when i got up in the when i woke up in the morning and i tried to get out of bed you know and i you know i had to call downstairs to my wife for assistance because i couldn't be able to, the, the four broken ribs had, uh, you know had wow. woken up but anyway i got to i, t I turned up at um i'd be really said look um, if it gets if it gets bad, I feel okay. But as long as I don't do something like lie down and get up again, and um, but don't mention anything to Fred. So we started the sessions, and um, the adrenaline, which is amazing, 
you know, for my first meeting with Freddie Mercury, and we were then we were in the studio like 15 minutes later, working on this track. And um, the way the way that um, we worked, there's there's the way Fred, Fred, Fred worked all the time. The way I prefer to work was we started off um, with a very basic unit of people, just piano, bass, and drums. Uh, uh, subsequently, it was always just piano and, and voice of me and Fred, but. And we booked the musicians. So we started to work on this. And Fred got more and more excited. And we kept doing trying things out. He said, Can you do this? And let now do some things. He would say, I love what you did there. Make it more, you know, dynamic and more flashy, you know, more dynamic, more, 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 more angelic, darling. You know, but, um, Sorry, Mike, were, were you producing it or, or, or you no, 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 at that, that time it um this was uh, David Dave David, David, was, David was doing it because it was, it was part of the show thing which he produced. Yeah. And so um but anyway, we got to, after a couple of three hours, really hard work, um, we got, you, as a musician, you kind of always know when you get the right take. You know, mm. it all feels good to everybody. And, and you know, Fred felt it, felt it went right. And everybody in the box went, wow, that's great. Mm. So we went to listen to it. And, and, I, and <laughs> I sat down in this chair and I just remember relaxing because I thought, wow, got through it, got away with it, you know. Um, and But as soon as I relaxed, um, you know, I didn't feel too good. <laughs> and, uh, and Freddie got more and more excited. And he said, oh, that's absolutely wonderful take. And he looked at me and said, let's just try one more and see mm. if we can get it and, and, and whatever. And, and I kind of thought, oh, whoa, okay. And I tried to get out of this chair and I, I, <laughs> I made a bit of a, 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 a mission of it. And David intervened then. He said, look, Freddie, I didn't want to mention it before, but Mike had a very bad car accident last night. So, um, you know, uh, and Freddie looked at me, oh, dear. I'm, saying, I'm sorry, well, never mind. I'll tell you what, he said, he looked at Phoebe as assistant. He said, um, Darling, get some of that Stolich Naya vodka. Give, give her a large glass of that. Some of those pills on there, that's painkillers you've got there. And he said, she'll be fine, you know. We were outside. Yeah. We went back and did another take, which was okay, but not as good. Anyway, fast forward. Um, we then went to do the, the second track. That also went very well uh, a couple of days later. And, um, that, and Fred and I just got on. And after we'd finished that, and he, he was, before he went back to Munich, he said, look, um, after the kind of magic tour, oh, we're all going to have a year off. And I would really, if you're interested, I would really like to work with you until we could try some things out. I've always wanted to do a cover version, and, I, and that cover version turned out to be The Great Pretender. And he said, uh, and, and we've had such a good time. It's been so creative. Maybe you'd like, we'd like to try writing together. And that was how we got to that okay. stage and um when we started to do that we started with uh, we started to um uh write for fred's solo album as it was then there was no hint of mantra we did the, we did the great pretender and that went out mm -hmm. and um um we then started to think about what we could do in the in fred's year off so we started to fiddle about a lot of mm -hmm. things um the first thing we, we we did was a thing called all god's people we turned and that, oh. that that was hijacked by Queen and finished up on the Innuendo album. Yeah. Um, but um, it got hijacked by Queen because we got then hijacked by you know Madame Cavier. So um, yeah. what happened with that is that um, um, at the end of the Kind of Magic tour, Fred was Fred was on a, a an arts program being interviewed and and they had, they had a list of pre prepared questions, but uh, they slung one in at the end, you know, which they always do. And they just said, oh, by the way, now we've finished that, um, do you have any favourite Spanish singers that you like, Spanish artists? And without drawing breath, he said, yes, Montserrat Caballé. And so they all went, oh, you, you like opera? He said, I love opera. And she's, you know, she's a female Pavarotti. She's an extraordinary woman, an extraordinary singer. And uh, yes, she's my favourite Spanish singer. The guy that promoted the kind of magic tour was an Italian guy called Pino Saliocco, and he lived in Barcelona and uh, never wanted to miss an opportunity. He knew of, of Carlos Caballé, who also lived in Barcelona, Montserrat's brother and manager. So he got in touch with Carlos and said, um, have you heard what Freddie Mercury said about your sister? And uh, maybe there's something, you know, that might happen. So, uh -huh. so we, we, we were totally unaware of this, except uh, in the middle of uh, I don't know, some of the time we were working, Fred phoned me up and he said, look, he was very excited. He said, I've just had a phone call from... Um, Caballé's people and uh, they want us to go over to Barcelona to meet them and this was like a you know 
like a, a weekend. Mm. And it was the following weekend we finished up in Barcelona. So we had nothing prepared at all, except um, the B side of the, the Great Pretender. We just exercises in free love. Yeah, that caught us out because we finished the, the we'd finished the master of uh, the Great Pretender, and it was off to the record company. And the engineer said, "What are you going to put on the B side?" And we completely forgotten about a B side. Mm. We'd only just started to work together, so we didn't have a B side. <laughs> We couldn't use any Queen songs. We couldn't. So we went into the studio at a very late hour, and, and Fred said, "Oh, he said you fiddle around with some of this just sort of wonderful, you know, flashy stuff that you do, and uh, I'll sing something on top of it." Well, we we gave it two or three hours work. We didn't have time to write lyrics, so Fred just did this vocalese mm-hmm. in which he, you know, but there were no lyrics, and that was exercises in free love. When we went to Barcelona, Fred said, "Look, I don't know how this is going to go because you know she. I don't know whether she's got a sense of humour, but you know mm. it might be difficult. Maybe she doesn't speak that good in English or whatever." And uh, he said, "Why don't we take this over and we can play it to her? It may make her laugh because it's me pretending to be a soprano." Anyway, that happened. We went to Barcelona. They got on like a house on fire. Um, she's got a fabulous sense of humour. Had a fabulous sense of humour, and um, all was well. Before we left, Fred said, um, oh, one thing. He said, I'll play you this thing that we... And he, he said, it's a song of me pretending to be like you. And I think she misheard it and thought it was a song we'd written for her. Right. So she gave it, she gave it you know, full attention. And she, mm-hmm. uh, at the end of it, she said, I love it. I will give it its world premiere at Covent Garden in three weeks' time. And she smacked me on the shoulder and said, and you will play. <laughs> so that... <laughs> that actually happened yeah, and yeah. uh after that we went after we did that performance at Covent garden um um oh, well her and i fred was in the royal box watching it all <laughs> take it easy yeah but we, we all went back to we all went back to garden lodge for for dinner and um and monty said uh when uh, during this she said, look when we finish this why did, can we all get around the piano and just sing things she said, I'd, I'd never sing anything but opera mm. so i would like to try singing things that you know maybe a bit of uh pop rock or something like that. When we started to lock around on, you know, the three of us on the piano for hours. And at the end of this, um, 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 she said, um, look, it's been absolutely wonderful. Why don't you write something for, for us to sing together? So we said, yeah, we'll have that, that would be fine. And off she went. And time went by. We, we, we didn't forget about it, but, but, you know, who knew whether she was serious or whether it was just something that was, you know, the aftermath of this. Yeah this experience um but she kept phoning saying is it ready yet and and so at one point i said to fred we sit, sat down to write one day i said look we've got to make we've got to make a start on on whatever way this is going to be and um i said he said oh, where do we start i said well just let's think of a title and he said oh let's just call it barcelona is the first time that we met that actually is the, first, is, the wow. first line of, is the first line of the chorus. That's profound. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I said, "This is like a really good start," and I yeah. said, "That's a really good line." And let's let's make it a, a song about just two people meeting from you know different different sides of the uh, you know of the mirror, if you like. Um, and quite early on in this, I said, "One thing we've got to be careful of here is don't, don't forget there was no template for this. That, yeah. uh, that that kind of thing hadn't been done before. It's before." It's before Pavarotti and the Three Tenors, you know, became playable on commercial radio and that kind of stuff. Um, it's before any any kind of interaction between a rock star and a, and a, and a, a an opera singer. So there, I said, look, one thing is she never sings, you know, rock music, or rock or, or pop music. She sings classical music. She's a soprano. That's what she does. You sing rock. You don't try to go. You don't try to bridge each other's. You know things. So what we have to write is the, the, the key to all this is to write a piece of music which actually suits both genres, but doesn't compromise anybody. And that was the challenge with Barcelona. Yeah. And uh, well, I think we did it really. Yeah. Uh, it so, broke. Uh, it broke new ground. It, it, I, it, I mean, yeah, yeah. it yeah. paved the way for many subsequent things. Uh, you know, and, and you know, I suppose the essence of these this conversation or these conversations is about trying to understand better mm. how that came about and you you've it's fascinating to hear the how the how it unfolded organically it was really not contrived you know there wasn't any sort of um in fact i can almost imagine record execs saying how can you do that it's not going to work possibly because of no precedent yeah 
Well, I, I Polydor never got to hear it till it was finished. Right. And so they, they, I mean, we had to have to say perhaps after them for just going. Well, I don't know what you're doing, but we're sure it's going to be okay. Yeah. Well, it was Fre- Freddie Mercury, Mike Moran, <laughs> and Monster at Bay. So there's there was a good chance it was going to work out, wasn't there? Yeah, I do remember. I do remember Tony when we finished the album because that, then, of course, the albums were a thing you bought, and you know, mm-hmm. a story, there was a story behind an album. So it's, it's, it's a diff, it's a different industry now, but but. Um, I said that you know, I, for me it was it's an album. That was it. And uh, uh, Fred said, "Right now it's finished. We'll we'll, ba- we'll Barcelona. We'll, that will be the single." And I and I kind of looked at him. I said, "A, a single?" And he said, "Yes." He said, "Don't you like it, dear?" I said, "Well, it's, I think it's fabulous, but but a single." Mm. And I was thinking, I'm trying to think of who would play it. Because yeah. it, it seemed to me that it that again it hadn't happened before that people would play that kind of you know that kind of song on the radio, um, but people uh, didn't challenge it. I mean, I was uh, you know yeah. an audience member, yeah, uh, you know, interested in Queen and Freddie Mercury yeah. and, and uh, you know, and I was aware of you as, as well, and I, and actually I wasn't aware of Montserrat Caballé at, at that point, but I didn't question question it i was very young to be honest it just felt like it should it just felt like it worked and it was right and i think i've you know i think everyone else felt the same way didn't they i think i think i think i think a large a large a large number of the population just went what is that yeah i think it's the shock of what it was and then they kind of listen when they listen to it you know a couple of three times of course mm. they're saturated with their own on sort of you know commercial radio but i, I mean you know it, it was such a good tune though wasn't it you know i mean yeah that, yeah, yeah you know that the, that on that level you know you didn't need to hear it many times to be wanting to sing it and actually the delivery <laughs> yeah. of it was quite yeah. remarkable but yeah. um it's it's just interesting to kind of get the context and understand its reception that you know what the world was doing at the time. There, there was uh, I I I'm, I thought I'd read somewhere that there was a sense that it it was um, preordained for the Olympics. It was never um, never in our minds at all. The Olympics yeah. were never even a part of the, uh, any discussion we had. Yeah, um, I, I'm I'm sure that you know this is again. A problem with, you know, you know, the truth mm. and the myth, and yeah. Yeah. you know, we we can only really by speaking to you, Mike. It's our only opportunity to really know what. Yeah, what happened with Barcelona? It came out. It's Barcelona came out uh, uh, pre. I think it was in Seoul at the Olympics before, but it but but it came it came out before the the, the you know the prior olympics to barcelona yeah yeah uh, um and 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 it was a hit then but yeah. it was a bigger hit when the olympics were on in terms yes. of yes because of overall sales because by that time fred wasn't with us anymore yeah suddenly yeah. but um but um it, you know i think barcelona as a city and 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 spain as a nation uh embraced it and because it you know they still play it when the fountains go off in the olympics mm. you know they plays plays just about every night I'm particularly pleased with Barcelona, the football club, win anything because they blasted out as well. But, yeah, yeah. Because of the royalties uh, there, Mike. <laughs> there you go. Well, there you are. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but uh, um, yeah, so it was a bigger hit then. Um, and because we had that, uh, that amazing launch in, in Ibiza in, in 18, mm. the summer of love, actually, in Ibiza, is when house music started. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so it was, it was kind of, you know, it was a, a big shock because we headlined a concert there, which had everybody, all the new romantics there, Spandau, uh, Duran Duran were there and everything. And nobody, nobody had heard it at that point. Mm. Um, that was the first time anybody heard it in public. Um, and, and you know, all the guys were kind of what? You know, what are you lot doing here? What are you? You know, you've got the. <laughs> mm. Why are you top of the bill? What's what's going on? What is this? What's Freddie's doing? You know. Anyway, nobody nobody knew what to expect. Least of all the audience. You know, there were about three thousand people in the in the, the Coup Club, which then became Privilege and Money Mission. Yeah. But uh, but uh, um, nobody knew what 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 was going to happen. And of course, they all, they were all completely stunned. I mean, yeah. you know, I was, you know, I know a lot of people were stunned hearing it the first time. Um, I mean, so I've got it thinking about it, hearing you talk about it. Yeah. There's a bravery, you know, this notion of success, you know, 
uh, I'm trying to think what would have been going on in all of your heads presenting this thing. Yeah. That was un, you know, unprecedented. But you, the you courage. Said, yeah, you said you you actually said that's exactly well, exactly my main point about Barcelona. And the, and when I when Fred said it was good out of the single, and I said, "Are you sure, Fred?" Mm. Um, and he said, "Absolutely." The thing about the thing about Freddie Mercury, and it's the same way with a, a lot of the output of of, of, of Queen. I mean, like, Bohemian Rhapsody is another good example. You have to have the courage to put these things out. You have to have confidence in that it's a it's a it's a decent piece of art that should that should go out, whether people like it or not. But but you know you take a risk in that you know that people are just going to ridicule it or or you know it's it's cost a lot of money and it didn't really amount to anything other than personal satisfaction. But but um, but it did it did the business as well as you know we were all extremely happy with it. So. But you're right to say courage, that, and that is that is a large part of all this, and, and certainly the that first performance, um, you know, and it was quite amazing. And when we hit the chorus, and all the fireworks went off as well, so yeah. you know, about you know, hundred thousand quid worth of fireworks. Yeah, I mean, it was like it was it was an incredibly magical experience. I don't want to sort of uh, unpick any of the magic of it, but mm -hmm. how was it performed uh, at that? Was was were the vocals live uh, or? There was some, but yeah, so, yeah. There's some, but we, we were. We, there was we, a real orchestra there, wasn't there? There, there, no, there, there? Yeah, there was, but but there wasn't a real orchestra. I did all the. Yes, the, I, I, I know. So, yeah. But we had to look. We had to make it look good. Mm, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, the, so, the, so we, we, you know, I mean, the, the, a lot. There were they were kind of playing live. There wasn't that much of them in the mix, but you know. Mm. But, so essentially, it was our it was our track. Yes. Yeah. The 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 interesting another interesting thing is that. Um, you know, in the studio, mm -hmm. there weren't many people involved. Were you know, the, you, you did, you played all, all of the music, you did all of the orchestrations on yeah. keyboards. Yeah. So it was kind of, you know, if we were looking at how it came about, we, you know, we, we might do some sort of analysis if we, you know, uh, if if we were being a bit academic about it. But the, you know, the things that see occur as being very influential here are culture and technology mm. and the technology you had available uh you could do pretty convincing orchestrations yeah it was it, it was in very early days of all that mm. Tony. but i mean uh, i had emulators but i yeah. an emulator I had floppy disks mm. and you had to push these things in and then they word and click for five minutes then you found out yeah. you put the wrong disc in you know and they so, weren't reliable they weren't particularly reliable either, no you know? no yeah yeah and and the, and the secret to 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 do those things was a mixture of those um, uh, kind of initial sample things on floor, yeah. uh, and uh, and decent sounding electronic you know electronic yeah things, you know, blended or, or, yes blended yeah. exactly right so, but, so, but, but that, course, that, sorry I was going to say you had you understood yeah intimately how the orchestration how orchestras oh, yeah. worked you know yeah, and yeah. so you, it, but there can't be many people who could have. I mean that in itself was innovative, wasn't it? You know. Yeah, but I mean, I've also I have the same approach. That the, the thing it's easy to get a keyboard and plunk a chord down with a string sound, and mm. but if you play it like a keyboard mm. rather than a string section, it doesn't sound correct. Yeah. Right. And you can't have the same. What you've got to do is you've got to mix the string sounds a little bit. Mm. You've got to think different samples, so it's, it sounds like different people, which yeah. it is. Yeah. And you know, you've all you've you've also. Um, you don't want to get into midi soup, you know, where you put mm. so much stuff on there that it just becomes a mess. But mm. also, you have to have a knowledge of orchestration. Mm. And and with all these string parts, I didn't put a chord down. I put four, five, however many notes there were in the chord yeah. separately. So yeah. they all had a different attack. They all had a different dynamic, mm. and and so they sounded natural. And, yeah. and you have to make them move like uh, the same way. And and, and you, this, the orchestral unisons, for example, mm. you know, you have to know about that. You know, the, you know, the cellos are, are okay with the uh, with the bassoons and that kind of stuff for doing the nice little riffy things on the bottom, and uh, you know, nice little unisons between cor anglais and French horns, mm. you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, mm. You have to have knowledge of orchestration to make it sound right. Having said that, um, one of the one of the first things that we did on Barcelona was I said, look, it needs this big intro, like it's, you know, it's this, you know, the older men characters are coming onto a stage. Mm -hmm. So I have this kind of triumphant intro before it, which is where that ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it, this is, this is a, this is a, this is a pure good luck story, mm -hmm. actually. We were, we just finished um, 
a day's work and we were very tired. And I and I kind of worked out this figure for me, ding, 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 ding. I said, you know, I worked out the sort of chordal pattern on it. And I said, uh, I said to Fred, I just think we ought to put this down. He said, well, we've got to, we've got an early start to let's do it tomorrow because we're all we're tired and we need something to eat. Da, da, da. I said, look, I'm just going to do it now. He said, you you can go home. I'll, I'll follow you. He said, no, I'll stay. So I put this um, floppy disk in to the emulator, and I thought it was a, a you know a belly kind of sound. Mm. And um, by the time it loaded up and it whirred and clicked, and sometimes they stick, you know, mm. kind of a, just to whack it on the top on the disc drive. To make yeah. It. But um, I played the sound, I said, this 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 will this will help us out. And I played the sound, and what I actually fired up was a a, a chorus Fender Strat. Okay. Um, which was nothing to do with anything that you know I had in mind. I said, "Oh my God, it's a complete waste of time." I said, "Look, I'll I'll put it down just so I don't lose the idea." And but I played it like two octaves above, mm-hmm. and when I but when we played it back, it had that like pingy tingy belly sound. Yeah, that's remarkable because I've never found that sound anything else. And I've, I've played it with live orchestras all over the world, and I've with all the bells in the world, I've never got anything remotely like that sound. So that is a complete fluke. Yeah, an auth- but an authentic. Di- you see, but it's it, it isn't it isn't though, Mike. It, you arrived at it by accident, but you, oh, you applied well, like, discretion yeah, yeah, and embrace. Well. You know, you, you know, you knew what worked. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it just illustrates another element of um, not following convention. There was a there was a forward. Mm. Well, you know, I don't know. You know, were, were you thinking? We, you, you weren't really. It just was organic, wasn't it? What you've described is yeah. you weren't going. Let's make something no one's ever heard before. No, 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 absolutely not. No. There was elements coming together, yeah. and it just so happened that the world was ready. What I loved about the, the way it was, that was created, because uh, I mean, we, I'd figure out something. You know, uh, like a, a little say, let's say. Um, a woodwind section, for example, and um, I'd write what I thought you know the woodwinds. I'd score it out as I did for the orchestra. You know, I, you know, I would have done for whatever orchestra we were playing with, and and I would do it in a conventional sense. And then Fred might say, "What if you you do that with them?" And I would go, "No, you can't really do that. Fred. It doesn't sound very good. That mm. you know, and it, and it would be try it, mm. and so I'd try it, and it would sound crap." And, right. it, and I would go, see, I told you so. Yeah. And then, but sometimes it would work. Yeah. And Fred would look at me and go, see, I told you so. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so that, I mean, it was a, the whole orchestration that was worked out between the two of us mm. um, very carefully. And it, each, each note was a labor of absolute love and, mm. and, 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 you know, whatever, uh, which is, you know. How long did you spend on it? Mike, you know, because Queen historically were known for spending obscene amounts of time and money on records. Mm. Were, were you working in in expensive studios, or you? you no, know, we were, we had we had the townhouse studios in which uh, I think uh, the boys were in one studio. Well, the, the boys were all scattered around doing things. Mm. We had uh, uh, the big studio in there, but it, we just it was rented for a year. Mm. So, but we we were. We didn't waste time in the studio, and that, that's that's another thing. F- uh, Fred, uh, I hate wasting time in studios. Mm. You know, it's there to it's a working environment, mm. and if your concentration st- starts to go, get out there, have a cup cup of tea, and come back. But mm. you know, don't try and work through. You know, they were expensive. You know, the, the, those well, studios, well, 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 the, the, time is money as well. well yeah, yeah, yes, it is. But um, I mean, I guess they got a deal for it. I don't know what, how much I did. It wasn't a cheap album to make. But no. don't forget, we also had to write the material as well. Mm. But that was that wasn't all done before we went in the studio. No. It was suddenly then we take might take a, a week off to. Uh, when we'd written Barcelona, we were then faced with the problem of of writing a number of other tunes, of you know. Similar, similar good. complexity. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but uh, but you know that wasn't an easy job. You yeah. know, and it's and 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 a lot of it was organic in terms of the arrangements. But uh, be, between and uh, I, you know, I could shortcut a lot of these things by going, okay, this is this is kind of what I what would traditionally work, if mm. you like, uh, in, in terms of voicings and that kind of stuff, and orchestral unisons and who played what, and but. Um, 
we would then have a discussion from Fred's point of view, uh, in which he would say, yeah, that's all very well, but can we do something? So, look, mm. things were worked out like that. Yeah. And, and it was back, you know, we backed things backwards and forwards. And I'd play something, you go, I love that. And then, you know, he, or, the same work with the vocals. I mean, mm. with, with, with the backing vocals, Fred had a, a language. Uh, he used to write his own, you know, kind of, he had a way of writing it down, which I learned. Uh, it's a bit like learning braille actually right. <laughs> but uh but um um so he's he would say to me eventually well, we need some quiet parts of it he said oh, we'll save some time he said, no. he said why don't you write it down in my language mm. and then i'll just go and sing it so we, we could move along fairly quickly wow and so i would do that but then the great thing is this is what this is <laughs> this is really important aspect of working with someone that's as good as he is mm. um is that um We'd do it, and it would sound fabulous. And then he would say, "Yes, yes, that sounds lovely. Um, let me let me try one more." Do, you know, yeah. and he would do something in it, a different kind of note in the harmony or a different kind of phrasing. And you would go, "Ah, that's why Queen sound like that." Mm. Oh, that's how Fred. That's why you know Freddie's backing vocals were a thing of joy, mm. you know, and uh, uh, quite brilliant. At, at, BVs and ideas, um, but, but you'd, you'd worked with them before, obviously as well. You know, with time, um, yeah. There, there was a, there, there was an interesting. Uh, I couldn't. It was hard to determine if it was a harmonized you, you'd done with a the harmonizer. There was yeah. like a final phrase at the end of time. Time don't wait for nobody at all. Which all sounded like Freddie. Yeah, vocally. Uh, no, the, uh, no, was um, that no, that was no. There's a quite a big choir on that. Peter oh, so, Snake was on it. Roger sang on it. I think. Yeah, Roger. Was, sang on it. But but there was a, like a sort of at the end of the record. Time don't wait for nobody at all. You know, was that a choir? Was it? Or, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It sounded very phased and and. Well, it only, oh, it, yes, it pro, yes, it probably had some yeah. processing on it. Yeah. 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 I can't remember. Now. But but I, you know, looking back, I was thinking, well, you could do that with a very phrase. Yeah. About twenty, you know, fifteen years, twenty years after that record was yeah. made, right. and you kind of go, "How did they do that?" Yeah. But that and that in it, that's something in itself. Yeah. That now we I, we would look back at it and think, "How did they do that?" Mm. You know. Yeah. But there, there was, I, th I thought there was a real beauty in the approach to the orchestrations and how they ended up sounding. That they were, you know, um, you just would, you, you know. It just sounded great. Yeah, you know, I mean that work. That was why. I mean, when we finished it, and I and <laughs> when we finished it, and and I said to Fred, "Well, I, I've I've scored it all out. Shall shall we get an orchestra in?" Mm. And he said, "No." He said, "We've we." He said, "We've this is us, mm. right?" And we've we've slaved over every note and thought about every aspect of it, and and these sounds. And he said, "It has something about it which is." Irreplaceable, really. Yeah. And that's why we never put an orchestra on it. They did, it was, subse they did subsequently. They did restart with it. But, uh, but you know, the, um, it doesn't sound like the original. No, it's, it, you know, it, it's the original available to listen to now on, on uh, streaming services. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I have the CD, so, you know. Um, yeah. I don't no, know no, no, it's all available, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, I mean, it gets recycled in box sets and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So. Yeah. But it's it's interesting, uh, Mike. You know, Freddie Freddie is proclaimed a genius by by many. You know, and um, but you know, I think it, you know I'd like we've kind of run out of time for this interview section, but I'd also like to sort of uh, respectfully suggest that you're a genius too. You know, oh, uh, yeah. know you. knowing your work, you know, and the level that you've worked at and the the things you've accomplished and the music that you've created, you really are, are a groundbreaker. Oh. Uh, and it's been a real honor to ask you about these processes and to hear you talk about them and the evolution uh, is, is fascinating and really enlightening. Uh, I know some of, some of these things have been said before, mm. but it, you know, Somehow, what you've said today has really painted a, a you know a really clear picture that I think people can watch this interview and glean, you know, how it came about and and how it was such a remarkable piece of work and the elements and the contributions and you know and in essence, um, 
I don't know if, if you could bottle it, you would, you know, uh, but it certainly will give people some clues of how to do remarkable things. And I hope someone who's listening to this and, and has listened to this goes and does something remarkable and then says, I saw that interview or those interviews and, uh, you know, it really helped me. Oh, well, that would be a nice thing to ponder. Yeah, hopefully that will happen. But uh, I, I think going back to, you know, to, 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 to sort of put a full stop in all that, mm. is that is that to do things like that, you need, look, you need you need someone that's, uh, you, you need like, you need like Freddie, like, for example, that's got, mm. that's got that enormous pulling power of fan base, big fan base, and fans who are prepared to accept whatever you do. But um, But it is, even with fans like, Queen fans, you know, you, you've got a, a, a amazingly supportive of anything anybody does that's connected with Queen. They're brilliant fans. Um, it, it is that bravery, as you said before. As you, uh, uh, whatever you do with anybody, you've, you've not got to be scared to put it out. If you believe in it as an artist, it doesn't matter whether you think it's going to make money or not. You know? There must have been loads of people who have thought, it was a crazy idea, yeah. but you know. It, but when you actually add the particular building blocks, you and Fred, you know, without Freddie's uh, sort of portfolio, you know, there wouldn't have been many people who would have been able to engineer, uh, you, you know, or or um, pull it off. I suppose, um, you know, there's a lot of things in the past. I, I, I mean, if it wasn't Freddie, do you think it could have happened? Could have happened. No, no, I, I can't think of anybody. I can't think of anybody mm. uh, immediately. I'm sure. <laughs> I can't think of anybody. I can't think beyond Freddie for any of that kind of stuff. But, but uh, uh, no, because he he had the he had the full house with all these particular mm. talents, and he had the bravery, he had the voice, he had the writing talent, um, he had the courage. You know, that it, it, it was only you lot that could have come up with it. I, I, I that's one of the things that I, I'm taking away with this, you know, there was those circumstances, those ingredients. No one else would have done it, would have thought to do it or, you know, or would have made it work at that time, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, and there, 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 yes, a lot of things went into making it what it was. I mean, you know, I've, I've got a, you know, a rock and a, and a classical background. So, mm, yeah, so, that helped, definitely. So, so, you know, to bring those two together is kind of a natural thing for me to do. Um, so, so actually, you know, it, it's not, you know, another thing that's interesting, it's not just a case of coming in with nothing, even though it grew organically. There was the, um, you know, some, some Carl Palmer was talking about uh, the repertoire that uh, Keith Emerson had and yeah. that drew on. You know, there was all of, you yeah. had that too, yeah. and Freddie had that too, and Montserrat Caballé had that that too. Mm. Working at world-class level and bringing that, that came in, that was there at the start of the project, wasn't it, really? Yeah. So. Well, it, well, it was, yeah. And, and actually with Montserrat as well. I mean, Montserrat's, Montserrat's ability as a, as a vocal artist was actually... <sighs> Uh, she's just mind-blowingly good, mm. and but she also had this background in as well as in the kind of the folk theatre, which is which is kind of it's not it's difficult to describe. It's a bit like perhaps Dolly Cart was in the in in the UK. So it's a it's a more of a folk opera type type of thing of you know whatever. Mm. Um, uh, difficult to put a, a, a sort of a title on and you know put a bracket around it, but um, mm. but she but she had that kind of flexibility in her voice. That, that dealt with things outside of grand opera mm. and, and her phrasing and the, and the dynamics she could, the control she had on dynamics, for example, came from a broader thing than just, you know, grand opera. Mm. So um, everyone played their part, didn't they? That's so right. to, just, just to summarize then, Mike, why was it such a big success? Do you, do you think? Well, I think well, well, because it worked as a it worked as a an art form, if you like. Great piece um, of music. Uh, but um, but it, yeah, it had the right elements in it. It turned out to be it turned out to be a good tune. It turned out to be a fabulous performance, and uh, you know the mix was a a nightmare because it's it's sort of really before serious automation to you know. Wow. <laughs> But uh, so the mix was another instrumental. You know, it's like playing a, playing an instrument. The three of the David 
David Richards, Freddie, and myself, all hands on deck, you know. And so that's, you, didn't, you didn't have automated, automation? No, no, um, you, you, it, it was difficult to do automation with Freddie around because he, he would say, I want it to sweep from this side. Yeah. In, you know, but Fred's a great yeah. master of using stereo, but this side to this side. So we all had to go, whoa, I'm, you know. Oh, you were playing the desk as an instrument. Well, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and um, wow, okay, that's another... <laughs> And that's another thing. The mix was a, you know, it was a hands-on thing. And sometimes, like anything else in in in, in music, uh, s- sometimes some of the best bits are mistakes. Mm. You know, like and like beautiful accidents. Beautiful accidents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, how many tracks were on? Were, were on? I'm just oh, trying to get a sense uh, of it. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. A, you listen to it, and it's um, it's yeah. enormous. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, th- I think the most we had there were two twenty-four tracks linked, so it'd be forty-eight tracks. But yeah. I mean, I mean, I can open my Mac now that I'm speaking to you from, and I can get ten thousand tracks that I want. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, you know, you had to be, you had to be, yeah. It's a different way of working. You were you thinking of the audience when you made this, or or were you just making the best possible record you could? I think we're thinking of the audience. I can't, yeah. I can't see them. that you see, um, you know, you we hear that a lot in records that change things you know making that it's that approach of being focused on creating the best yeah. possible piece of music. well and you've got you had to think if you if that were you if that were if that were a uh, you know an item when you started writing you have mm. to say then well what sort of audience are we aiming at yeah yeah and you never did that so no, what about the presentation of it if if i can ask uh you know did you think about how it was going to be presented it wouldn't have, yeah. Well, no. How it was gonna, yeah, you know, but could it? Would it be performed, or you, you were just? It was, <laughs> it's a, it's a remarkable, uh, remarkable, and you know, uh, I can see why it broke the mold. You know, I, I think a lot of people will see why it broke the mold. And I mean, the bit, the bit, the video that, that we did at, Shep- at uh, Shepparton was uh, was a quite made. David Mallet directed that. But that was mm-hmm. that was a, that was that was a brilliant video. I thought. You mm. know? It's an incredible, incredible way of putting it together. Um, and look, um, people perform it all over the world. Mm. I do. We do, I do it live with. Uh, I'm working with Russell Watson at the minute, and it's it's in it's in our program. We've got guest soprano. Now we can do we do Barcelona a lot. Yeah, but you know, people have played it all over the world now, and it's been covered by a lot of people. It is. I mean, the the impact of that track, but you know, let's not, uh, you know. It was so pr- successful and big, but the album's a masterpiece as well. Well, you know? I, I would urge people, who, you know, if, anybody, if anybody's interested, to, you know, Barcelona is one thing that that got mm. t- through to a lot of people because it was the hit, if you like. Yeah. But um, the rest of the album's got some really good things on it, and it, yeah. they're really worth a listen. Mm. 